You may be wondering, as a high school chemistry student, why I'm going to talk to you about what your grading should look like in your class, because you might not have control over that. But I want to share with you what gr good grading looks like, why, and, and if it's not like that, maybe what you might think about doing as a student in order to make sure that you are learning effectively. Now, there are two overarching goals for grading uh, that we want to have in healthy educational practices. One is that it should be based off the chemistry you understand and know. Okay. And the second one is that it should encourage learning. So let's talk about this first one. It should be based off chemistry. What I mean by that is it should not be based off your practice. It should not be based off homework. It should not be based off assignments where you're trying stuff. That's where you're learning. That's not where you're showing off whether or not you've learned it. Uh, it should not be based off of extra credit. Especially for weird stuff like not going to the bathroom seems to be the rage still. Uh, that's super unhealthy and toxic. You should go to the bathroom when you need to go to the bathroom and you should not be getting a chemistry grade based on whether or not you bought in Kleenex, okay? Now, when we say it's based off chemistry, what it should be based off of then, it should be based off tests. And there are different ways to assess whether someone understands chemistry, but for your grade, you should be doing retrieval. And that's critical. And when we say tests, it should be good tests. It should be quality. And so let's talk about what the organization looks like of a good test or a bad test. So if we have an organized test, then we're gonna have that organized based on standards. And that means that for unit two, you have these five things that you should have learned, and that's what's gonna be on your test. Now there's two ways that that can fall apart. One way that can fall apart is too many things. So if you get a test question and it's convert this and then do this calculation and then draw it at the particle level diagram and then add in this representation for the reaction. Well, if you get any one of those wrong, you don't know what you did wrong. There's no way to draw feedback both for the teacher and for the student, okay? So too many things clustered into one assessment is not a healthy thing for good tests. And the second thing is that it shouldn't match your review. What I mean by that is, if your teacher's giving you a review that's got 10 questions the day before a test, and then your test is those 10 questions again with some minor modifications, you don't have to actually understand chemistry in order to be successful on that test because you just have to know how to do what was on the review. And the word for that is abstract. By abstract, we mean you can mimic what the teacher did, you can mimic the solution manual to this, uh, you can follow the steps, but you really don't know what you're doing. I think a lot of students experience that in their high school chemistry classes where they feel like it's an abstract thing and they know how to do it, but they don't know why and they don't know what they're doing. That takes time to develop, okay? Uh, but a good test will look at that a little better. Now, some tools for that, there's a thing called Johnstone's Triangle and it looks at particle diagrams, macroscopic, and symbolic levels. And what I mean by that is that if you do something in a lab, so we would see at the macroscopic level, what would that look like at the particle level? And how would we represent that using symbols and mathematics? In chemistry, we tend to overfocus on this part and underfocus on these two. But in a good understanding and a good assessment question, you can incorporate all three of those. And so many tests just focus on this one, which allows us to stick in this abstract frame. We should encourage you to learn. We want you to learn. Chemistry is amazing. It is super fun to take as a class. It's so interesting and so difficult and so challenging. And that's awesome. Okay? We want you to learn. But if you're doing that and you love it, and then all of a sudden you get to unit two and you get a bad test score, what's gonna happen? So we need the ability to recover and be able to move on uh, to the point where you're not having a single setback early on in the process debilitate you. So we want your good test questions to be assessments, but we need them to give you feedback that's productive. So let's talk about that. If you get a bad test score, you probably don't feel great about yourself, but if you get a bad test score and it's possible for you to do a reassessment, you might have what we call hope. You might go, okay, I didn't do well, but I can figure it out. That's what we want you to be able to do. We want you to be able to go through and learn and to have multiple opportunities to do these assessments because in any test that you take in your life, you're always gonna have multiple chances to go through and figure it out. If you take a driver's test and you fail, you don't just not drive for the rest of your life, you take it again. You go back, you take some feedback, and you figure it out. Now, when we get our feedback, we want it to be based on how your chemistry understanding is. 
And that's where we get into trouble with these things. If you're getting points for homework, your feedback is, did you do your homework or not? That leads to cheating, it leads to copying homework questions, it leads to doing a bad job on your homework and not focusing on learning. But when we give you good tests, that give you the option to go back and do a reassessment, now your feedback is based off of your chemistry knowledge and understanding. And that's critical for both you, the student, and the teacher. Because the teacher needs to be seeing whether you understand things or not so that they can adjust their instruction and adjust their assessment. And so we want to set up a positive feedback loop where you're doing reassessment. Now, a key for that is doing the standards. If you have five standards and you got good scores on one, three, and five, but bad scores on two and four, then you can take that feedback and go back and plan for a reassessment. That should not look like, oh, did I divide by two wrong and incorrectly or something like that, or did I forget to change centimeters to meters? Your feedback should be very, very hidden almost from you, where it's like, okay, I didn't understand this concept. Now you wanna go back, not to what you did wrong on the test, you wanna go back to what did I learn in the class itself? What did we learn about standard two? What experiments did we do? What particle diagrams could I represent for it? What symbols have we used? What discussion have we done? What evidence is there? And you want to compile as many of those pieces into a point where you can then recover and then start to understand better. And if we do that, what happens is that when you move from unit you know, 2 to unit 3, that if you're able to go back and reassess, and you didn't understand some things from unit 2 that you're going to need to know in unit 3, you're now able to add those together. Now, if you're a student and you don't have that option, that means that you're going to need a plan for when things don't go perfectly in chemistry, because that will probably happen at some point. It happens to everyone at some point. Some, some of us hide it well. But if you get to unit two and you really didn't understand this thing about gas pressure, well then you need to set up a way for you to be able to go through and make sure that you understand that. And it's not about just checking your wrong answers, it's about going back to the initial things that we learned in class and valuing the experiences we had. We want to do things that are complicated and difficult and make connections. So as an example, here's a block of wood. If I put this in water, it floats. We would say that it's because of its density. Okay, so we have some understandings about that. But if I take this block of wood that I've drilled holes in, okay, and I hold this up and I say, what will happen if I drop this into water? There are perfectly logical explanations that a student could come up with that would say that it would sink, and other perfectly logical explanations that would say that it would float, based on your experiences in your life. So then you have to go through and look at those and evaluate them, because one of them is not true, right? Either this will sink or float when I put it in the water. But we want you to be going through and doing analysis where you're thinking between these different levels and going, okay, well, what's going on at the particle level? And what will happen when I put it into the water? And is there any way I can use mathematics to answer this? And what does the whole have to do with anything? And you're trying to then take all of these concepts and ideas that you know and pull them from the abstract into this concrete example and figure out whether or not you can make a prediction. And then you go through and you do it. You get your feedback and say, okay, I was right or wrong. And why was I right or wrong? What happened? What do I know about all of these features, and how does that explain what I saw? And so if you have a healthy grading system, it makes you feel included in the class, like you belong, and like you can learn and do well. And if you don't have some of these pieces, it can be very frustrated and it can feel like you're isolated and that you don't belong in the class, and that's not what we want. We want you to feel like you are in a great spot to be in a chemistry class and to learn chemistry and to enjoy it. And, and to be able to learn about how this, all this stuff is used to kind of teach you about how to learn stuff. It's really an excellent class and I hope you have a great time in it. Uh, in order to enhance that though, you want to align as many of your grading practices as you can so that they're, they're going to help you with this kind of loop.